This video is sponsored by Squarespace. You can make your own beautiful website or online store with this all-in-one platform. Hi everyone, this video we're going to be filling a sketchbook page of a bunch of little critters with watercolor and brush pen and pencils and gouache, all that good stuff. And I'm just going to be chatting while we fill this page. If you have anything to draw while you watch this, feel free. Um, I had a lot of fun with this page. I had a bunch of like little doodles sketched out already that I did a couple days ago and I decided I just wanted to like color them and make this page feel a bit more finalized. And I really wanted to draw some crows. I just think birds are really fun to draw. I wanted to try drawing some like poses that I don't normally do. Um, well, there's kind of only one pose that I don't normally do where it's the first one where like he's kind of like bent down a bit and like his wings are at different angles than I'm used to drawing. So I wanted to try that out um, and I think it worked out. My biggest thing for making watercolor look good is to kind of like shift the colors as you work. Um, and also crows are black, but I would I choose like a dark bluish purpley color to depict them because I just think it's so much more interesting than like grays and blacks and stuff. Um, I really like doing that for like desaturated colors like whites or blacks or grays. You can kind of choose a color to represent it. Like I think in a lot of like cartoons, characters with dark black hair will have like dark blue hair instead, but you just like know that it's black in a way. Um, that's kind of what I'm doing here. And it's really good to like shift the hue while you paint instead of making the entire thing all one color. You can mix little colors in as you go and sort of like shift it and add some variation. And I think that adds a lot to the painting um, instead of just like having it all flat one color. It's a little bit more work to like go back and forth to your palette and like add a little purple, add a little blue, add a little so something else. Um, but I think it's really worth it for those extra steps and like mixing colors as you go and almost like giving everything a gradient, especially on that first wash. That's like one of my biggest watercolor tips probably. Um, these also start off very blotchy, very messy, and I sort of rein them in near the end. So bear with me if they look a little rough. Um, I also went over them with gouache near the end as well. And there's other critters on this page. There's like a gecko eventually. There's a, I think a ferret some other birds, um, a rat, and I think I also drew a bunny at one point. I like to sketch in graphite because it's easy to erase, but I didn't even erase in this. I, I think it's better to sketch in a colored, like a color pencil um, that's similar to what you're going to be actually painting with. Um, I usually like to use my Prismacolor terracotta pencil to sketch with because I feel like that like warm um, reddish brown goes well with like any color pretty much. I kind of forgot about my usual process on this page. I just grabbed a pencil and sketched and like, I didn't really think it through too well. I find things look better if you actually sketch with a color instead of gray, but it doesn't look too bad with gray. Um, it's just something I kind of like didn't do today for some reason. And uh, I really like all these blues. Um, I'm using my Shinhan watercolors today instead of the other ones. Um, I think Shinhan watercolors are like my favorite I've ever tried. Um, I haven't tried too many different watercolor brands, but the Shinhan ones are just such a good price for so much paint and they lift off the palette really nicely. They're very like creamy, buttery sort of feeling. Like I just really like them. Um, and they've lasted me like forever. Like I haven't had to buy refills of any of the colors yet. Um, I guess I don't do tons of watercolor painting, but you know, I've had them for a few years and I haven't had to refill. Um, I just buy them open stock at my local art store. And for the pencils, I'm using Prismacolor uh, Premier pencils and the Faber-Castell Polychromos. Sometimes I like the Fa Faber-Castell ones. Today I was feeling the Prismacolor ones a bit more because their cores are softer so they can lay on a bit thicker on top of all these colors I already have. Um, but if I want finer details, I will go for the Faber-Castell ones. Uh, something else I wanted to mention, a couple things. Um, I have my November Patreon rewards out right now, and if you like foxes, you'll really like this month's package. There's a really cute fox sticker, 
a Fox print and a Fox sketchbook print, which is basically scans from my sketchbook compiled into a print. You can get those on my Patreon. There's a sticker tier if you just want the sticker, a print tier for the two prints, and a bundle tier if you want to get everything that is available for the month and you have until the end of November to pledge. The second announcement is my shop has updated with sticky notes. They're actually post-it notes, they're post-it brand, custom post-it notes that I got printed. There's a really round frog, a really round chicken, and one with like clovers and tiny little toads at the bottom. Um, They're really sticky. They're great for writing on. You can write your to-do lists and stick them up somewhere. I've stuck a bunch of them to the wall to test how good their adhesion is, and they have not fallen off for a few weeks. So they're, they're pretty good quality when it comes to the stickiness, and I'm really happy with how they came out, and they're on my shop right now. I also added a bunch of stickers that haven't been there yet, some prints, um, some other stuff. There's lots of stuff on my shop, and I'm going to be having some Black Friday sales. So if there's anything you've had your eye on, this season will be the chance to get it if you have been waiting for a sale. So uh, check all that out in the description. And uh, uh, now I'll keep talking about the art. Um, I'm pretty happy with how all these turned out. Um, It was pretty fun to just use my watercolor again. I think a large part of this year, I kind of started experimenting with different media and that's always fun. I was experimenting with the Karen Dash pastels and I still really like them. I didn't use any of them today. Um, I want to do like a 2023 uh, favorite art supplies video if you'd be interested in that. Um, I was hesitant to do it because I feel like my supplies have kind of stayed the same and I don't know when my last art supply video was but I think it's fun to kind of like round up the supplies that I really liked the most over the year. Um, Even if they stay the same from year to year, there's going to be some differences, and I think it's cool to document those. But yeah, a lot of this year, I was using the Karen Dash pastels, and I feel like I kind of missed my watercolor art. And these last few months, I kind of went back to the watercolor, to the gouache, pencil, combo that I like to do a lot. And I feel like I've been having a lot of success with it. I just love watercolor. I feel like it's like the ultimate art supply. Um, watercolor as long as you have gouache to go with it and like pencil crayon it's like my favorite combo ever Um, the more I do it the more I get used to it and I discover new ways to work and and like just mixing colors is so satisfying Uh, and the sketchbook I have works great with it like I don't have any complaints I think it is the Stillman and Byrne beta sketchbook and it's the hardcover one and like the white paper um it's like a cold pressed mixed media sketchbook and it's not too expensive and it's really good. My only thing is that I got one that's a little too big. It's not the most portable sketchbook, but I'm nearing completion. We'll probably have a sketchbook tour by the end of the year. I hope that's uh, going to happen. Um, and then once I get a new sketchbook, I will probably get the same one that I have right now, but in their like smaller size probably half the size of this it's I think it's like five by eight or something like that it's like the standard like small sketchbook size but not too small I don't really like pocket sketchbooks I think they are too small for me I will never fill it it doesn't feel like I have enough room to work um those are more for like traveling or if I genuinely just need to put a sketchbook in my pocket. Now for a quick break to thank this video's sponsor, which is Squarespace. Squarespace is an online platform where you can build your own customized website. What I would recommend, especially if it's your first website, is to browse through all of their templates and you can use them as a starting point and change a lot of things about them to fit more with what you want your site to look like. You can change the fonts and the colors, you can add pages, you can even add a gallery to one of your pages if you'd like a portfolio, which is what I did. And all you have to do is upload all of your images into the gallery. You can drag and drop them and then they're all displayed beside each other nicely. They also have a fluid engine editor, which allows you to drag and drop elements on your page and they all fit on a grid. It gives you the flexibility of moving elements around, but it also keeps it neat and tidy with the grid that they all sit on. If this sounds interesting to you, go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash gel arts and you can get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Do you like tiny sketchbooks? I feel like I have so many 
little sketchbooks that I just have not filled. Like, I don't know if I've ever filled a tiny sketchbook. They're so cute and they're so convenient. They just like fit in your pocket and they're so small and I just like want them, but I never use them. It's really weird. I'm sure if I like had a certain project, I would use one. Like, I think I filled an entire one of like Inktober stuff in a really like mini sketchbook for like tiny Inktober drawings. And I filled a couple in like life drawing classes where my homework was to do like observational drawing from life. And I did them all in a tiny sketchbook because it was like so easy to take with me places. And I mostly just drew my family. I don't really like drawing strangers because I don't like to stare at strangers. Um, but sometimes I would draw like people. I don't know. Um, I did use them for like those types of projects. But now that I'm not really in school, I don't really do Inktober anymore. Or, or any stuff like that, I don't really use my tiny sketchbooks. And I have one that's really nice quality, actually. I think it was sent to me by, like, a uh, Etcher company. And it's, like, cotton cold press watercolor sketchbook, and it's really tiny, but it's so cute. But I feel like if I'm gonna do sketchbook work, I'm gonna grab my, like, main sketchbook instead of, like, a little one, because I, I like to fill the bigger sketchbooks. It just feels like it's the current like project that I'm working on. Like I feel like my sketchbooks are sort of like time capsules. They sort of like represent a period of time in my art and it's like a collection of art that's all from the same time. And I don't like to use more than one sketchbook at a time because I like them to be kind of like consistent and linear almost and like show all the art I made in like a certain time period. Um, and if I'm like jumping to little sketchbooks, I don't like there to be like random drawings in it that aren't really like specific to anything. It's just like, I don't know when I drew this, but um, it could have been years ago. And then I'm drawing something like two years later. And then it's like, it almost feels like the drawings don't match. Like they're not from the same like group. I don't know if that makes sense. That's how my brain works for drawings. I have sort of a very like all or nothing view of things like if I'm gonna have a sketchbook they all need to be in order they all need to be like I need to only draw on this sketchbook and then once I'm done I can draw on another sketchbook and I can only draw on that sketchbook and that's sort of how my mind works with a lot of things um, but that's how I like to use my sketchbooks and I'm really excited to be sort of almost done this one and get to start another one and get to start a small one I want to finish sketchbooks faster so that I have like smaller sections of art if that makes sense. I also like to upload more frequent sketchbook tours and it's hard to do that when I'm using such gigantic sketchbooks. I mean this really isn't that big of a sketchbook. I think it's like eight and a half by eleven. Um, maybe like eight and a half by maybe eight by eleven. I'm not sure. I, I don't know. Um, it's not the biggest sketchbook. This might be some people's normal sketchbook size but I prefer smaller and I'm really excited to get to that once I'm done with this one. Um, something that was a lot of fun with this page was choosing colors for the backdrop and dropping them in. I think the light teal for the crows was a really nice touch and I think they look really good with the teal. Um, I'm definitely a fan. And uh, putting the pink behind the green gecko, it's like a nice little contrast color. And the greens behind the ferret that you saw and the rat. Um, and then I went in with some pencil and added some texture to the backgrounds because that kind of adds a lot to um, the overall look of the page. I think when you open it and there's like tons of like pencil and like uh, mark making and like hatching all over the page, it's kind of like exciting for your eyes to look at. So I definitely wanted to include some of that. Um, once I was done coloring in all the stuff I did, I had some blank space left, so I went back to Pinterest, looked at some references for some inspiration, saw a bunny, I drew it, I wasn't really feeling it, um, I just like left it at black outlines and I don't know, it just felt like I was doing filler and not actually like drawing something that I wanted to draw. Um, so eventually I kept looking up some more birds and some more like ideas of what to draw. And I just thought, you know what, I drew a bunch of birds on this page, I'm gonna draw more birds. And I found this like white bird, I think it might be an albino crow, but I'm not really sure. But I just thought its colors were so beautiful. It was like 
white but it had like pinks and browns and like peachy colors and I really wanted to capture that next to the dark crows because I thought it would look cool to have like black crows even though they're blue and then white crows even though it's pink it's kind of what I was talking about with like representing colors with different colors so black can be blue white can be any light pastel color it just really depends on how saturated you make it and the balance of like colorful parts and white parts and grayish parts to make it actually seem white like you know how in the winter when snow gets shadows on it it's like this bright blue but you still know that the snow is white even though the shadow is blue it's sort of like that um although someone could look at this and think that's a blue bird and that is a pink bird and that's okay but i was sort of like suggesting the white and the black if that makes any sense um but it was a lot of fun to sketch them out I went in with a brown liner eventually after I did all of the drawing and the initial coloring and I tried to not outline it completely. That's something I like to do with my uh, outlines. I don't like to completely just like outline the entire thing, add lines over all of my old lines. I try to add the ink wherever I think it needs it. So wherever I want to emphasize a little bit more, a place that might need more clarity, um, the focal point of the sketch, somewhere where I want to do more shading or more details. Um, I like to outline things that are overlapping other things. So if something is in front of another object, outlining that can help to like show that perspective a little bit better and to show like this is overlapping this, that this one is closer to you and this shape is further away. So that's why I like to not outline the entire thing. I don't just blindly go in and like do lines all over it. I try to pick and choose where I put the lines. And the days where I just blindly put line art over the whole thing are probably days where I'm not really thinking too hard about what I'm doing. Um, it's also not an exact science. I just kind of like do what I think looks right. It's just a sketchbook, just having fun, experimenting, filling a page of colorful critters. This was also one of those days where I wasn't really sure what to draw, but luckily I had a page that already had some sketches on it. So I kind of went with that and tried to just like fill the space the best I could, use a bunch of colors, have fun with it, try to not leave too much blank space because I think that it makes for an interesting sketchbook spread. If I'm actually filming it, I want it to be something that has a lot of art on the page. And I had a lot more footage than I thought I was going to get. And I feel like I always have the most fun with the last couple of sketches on the page. They feel the most natural and I think that's because I'm the most warmed up and it almost makes me want to like do a whole other page. But at that point, I'm kind of tired, even though I'm like very warmed up and drawing is easier than it was when I first sat down. Um, I have a lot less energy, so it's kind of like... Do I keep drawing or do I conserve my energy for other things? Because it does become exhausting. Even if you're doing a good job and you're like having fun, drawing is still tiring. It takes a lot of energy, I found, which is kind of frustrating, but it's sort of a, a revelation that I've had when it comes to art. I really hope you enjoyed seeing me draw all these cute little guys. Um, sketchbook tours should be coming within the next month or two. I think I might have more pages than I'm estimating. Um, I also just updated my shop with new sticky notes and there's new stickers and prints and lots of stuff. Lots of stuff for the holidays. Gonna have some sales coming up soon as well. So I hope you are interested in that and don't forget to check out my November Patreon package. So I really hope you enjoyed this. Let me know which sketch is your favorite as usual and let me know if you were drawing anything while watching this and what you're currently drawing and also uh what is your current sketchbook do you have a sketchbook right now and what brand is it let me know i really hope you enjoyed this video thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in my next one